This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we end today's show in the Philippines, where we're joined by Walden Bello, the longtime scholar and activist who ran for vice president of the Philippines earlier this year. On Monday, Walden Bello was arrested on cyber libel charges, what was widely viewed as a politically motivated case. Walden's arrest comes just weeks after the inauguration of the Philippines' new president, Ferdinand Marcos. Marcos, Jr., the son of the former U.S.-backed Filipino dictator Ferdinand Marcos, who brutally ruled the Philippines for two decades, from 65 to 1986, when he was overthrown in the People Power Revolution. The Philippines' new vice president is Sara Duterte, the daughter of former President Rodrigo Duterte, whose so-called war on drugs killed tens of thousands of people. The charges against Walden Bello stem from comments he made about a member of Sara Duterte's campaign. On Twitter, Walden Bello wrote, "'These people are mistaken if they think they can silence me and suppress my exercise of free speech.'" Well, Walden Bello is joining us now from Manila. Welcome back to Democracy Now! Describe what happened to you on Monday. Well, thank you very much, uh, Amy, for inviting me. And I think, you know, that uh, it's, it's very important to talk about the weaponization of the law in order to intimidate uh, people who exercise their free speech. I was basically um, at home on uh, Monday afternoon, and um, the police uh, came in and uh, served me the warrant of arrest that had been uh, issued um, a, a, a few hours earlier in the southern city of Davao, which um, Mayor Duterte used to be the head of. And it was transmitted to Quezon City here. And uh, so it was, um, we had been waiting for the warrant for weeks. <clears throat> But uh, we didn't expect the speed within uh, one day uh, that the warrant would be issued in Davao, which is several hundred miles uh, away, uh, and um, uh, issued here to me in, in, in Manila. So I was brought to uh, the police station, and uh, it was too late to post bail, uh, and people said that that was deliberate to make me spend a night in jail. And um, the um, next uh, day, the uh, bail uh, for um, um, two counts of cyber libel uh, was posted, uh, nearly about, uh, coming to nearly about, um, um, you know, slightly under um, uh, um, uh, $2,000. Uh, and um, and I was um, I was released uh, late afternoon on 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 Tuesday, so uh, that's sort of a blow by blow account of the 24 hours uh, from my arrest to um, my uh, release. Can you talk about the cyber libel law that was passed in 2012? Well, you know, it's uh, you know, it's uh, uh, a law that is very broad in terms of its application, um, you know, to and implications for free speech in this country, uh, in the sense that um, it criminalizes libel. Uh, so libel is no longer just a civil charge, which can be settled uh, um, through negotiations uh, and through, um, you know, a cash um, 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 in order to be able to uh, um, settle a case. And, of course, uh, but libel, what they're using, and, for example, in your case, you would question then fellow vice presidential candidate Sara Duterte's record as Dav uh, Davao city mayor, claiming the city has become the drug smuggling center of the South. Yeah. So this kind of political criticism they then cast as cyber libel? 
No, it, uh, yeah, well, it, it uh, let me explain. Um, there were certain remarks that my social media team had posted uh, on uh, Facebook uh, that um, uh, asked uh, Mayor Duterte if she was aware, you know, that her press information officer, uh, a person named Jeffrey Tupas, was uh, in a party in which drugs were flowing and um, uh, where uh, uh, people were arrested, but he was not uh, arrested. So it was um, in the context of a political debate in which I was raising uh, issues uh, regarding her performance as mayor, because that would have an implication for people to assess her record if she was really capable of being vice president, because I was, she and I were running for the same position. So the person that was referred to as uh, having been at that party um, was strictly incidental to the fact that it was raised in the context of my questioning her record, not only with respect to that person's presence, but also infrastructure. And as you said, the reputation of Davao City, of which she was mayor, uh, as, as a drug center. So because of that, you know, they launched this cyber libel now, case well, against well, me. Well, then, uh, Sarah Duterte, now the vice president of the Philippines, said in a statement Tuesday that she did not play a role in your arrest. She said, I've never filed a libel case in my life. Well, I, nobody believes that. I mean, it was fairly clear that uh, she is the prime motivator of this. Uh, and I was trying to say, you know, that um, in response to my calling her out to participate in a debate, because that's really what uh, people running for public office do, they not only push her camp, not only push this cyber libel case, uh, the city council of Davao, uh, city um, 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 declared me persona non grata, uh, and I was also labeled by her camp as a narco politician. So you see, the pattern is that they don't respond to criticisms. Instead, they use the law and they use uh, in instruments of intimidation uh, in order to silence you. And this is exactly what's happening right now. Uh, it's, you know, the, the idea that some that she is not engaged in this, it's, it's, uh, nobody believes that. I mean, the person was her press information officer. Um, uh, because of public criticism, she fired him, um, you know, after he was found at the drug party. So there was an element of um, admission that he had done something wrong. And then when he became, uh, she became the vice president and head of the Department of Education, she is now back. This person is now back as her uh, press relations and uh, officer and head of her media office. So, so basically— Walden, I, before we go, yeah. I want to make sure you sure. can comment overall on the new government that is headed by the son of the former dictator, um, that is headed by Bambang, by uh, Marcos Jr. Uh, and Sarah Duterte, the son of the previous president. Yes. Um, let me just say that um, um, uh, people are really, really quite uh, worried that this is uh, uh, a foretaste of things to come, um, because just you know a few weeks after the new government was inaugurated, uh, there is this effort to intimidate the opposition um, by filing this cyber libel case and. By the way, my, uh, uh, my case um, must be seen in the context of thousands of cyber libel cases. I think the, the estimate is 4,000 that have been uh, lodged by politicians against their opponents uh, over the last few years. The most prominent, of course, is the way that the uh, father of Sara Duterte uh, had f cyber libel cases uh, filed against Maria Ressa, the head of Rappler, who won the Nobel Prize, uh, incidentally. But uh, I guess what people are now saying is that 
you know, it's only been a few weeks and they're showing their fangs at this point in time. Uh, and, um, and that's true. I think that uh, this was, uh, of course, aimed at me, but the implications are much larger. And I am being made uh, an object lesson uh, of what can happen if somebody dares to criticize yeah, uh, a person in high office, uh, somebody in high office in this administration. So uh, I, I think, um, uh, Amy, this is the reason why this has sparked so much domestic outrage, as well as international outrage, because, you know, people, uh, you know, really feel, you know, that this weaponization of the law, like the cyber libel, uh, is something that has uh, become uh, the modus operandi of these heads of government and officials that really do not like criticism. Uh, so, you know, the uh, people that you talk to, you know, throughout the whole range of, of the um, uh, society here, uh, throughout the opposition, they have come together. On this, on, on this case because they know that if they win this case, if, if, the, if, the, um, uh, if the administration, uh, you know, wins this case in the judiciary, and it's likely that it will win this case because it has a very strong control over judiciary, then people really feel that democratic rights are in very grave danger. That is what it is at stake here at the moment, and I think people see it, which is why they've come together uh, to demand that the administration, the Secretary of Justice at this point, just drop this, this, this charge uh, against me. Well, Walden Bello, of course, will continue to cover your case. Walden Bello, acclaimed Filipino scholar, activist, former vice presidential candidate in the Philippines, co-founded Focus on the Global South, arrested Monday and charged with cyber libel charges. He was released from police custody on Tuesday. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! is currently accepting applications for a people and culture manager. Learn more and apply at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Feltz, Mike Burke. Welcome back, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Charina Nadura, Sam Alcoff, Tay Maria Studio, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey, Miss Sudan, Mary Conlin. Our executive director is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Stelly, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara, Hugh Grant, Dennis Moynihan, David Prude, and Dennis McCormick. I'm Amy Goodman. Stay safe.